So, it turns out that one's camera of choice for racing simulators is a really hot topic. I recently made a video where I put forth my case for why I prefer to drive from the cockpit, link is in the comments. And other than the video well and truly overperforming for a small channel like mine, people were very keen to weigh in with their two cents on the matter. It's been quite interesting reading through everyone's thoughts about this, so I wanted to do this follow-up to address the most common sentiments that I saw, but also to touch on some of the finer points of the cockpit camera that were outside the scope of that original video. But before I start, a quick disclaimer. The first thing that became abundantly clear is that lots of you favour the cockpit camera, with many of you agreeing with my points on the immersion element in particular. One part of that which I neglected to mention is that if you want to turn off the HUD entirely, I think the cockpit camera is the way to go because you can make use of the vehicle's instrument cluster, which is very immersive indeed. Now, what did slightly surprise me was just how strongly the bonnet or hood drivers showed out. I mentioned that I thought it was a good compromise for people who struggle with the visibility aspect of the cockpit, and it seems that many of you agree, even if a handful of you were unreasonably emotional about it. I think particularly if you're playing on a smaller screen, I can very much appreciate the reasoning for going that direction. Another very valid reason that you might choose the bonnet over the cockpit is if your game of choice just doesn't do the cockpit very well. I think that most of the modern simulators do the cockpit well enough for my needs in that they give you a sufficient amount of options to adjust the seating position on a per car basis and the ability to toggle the driver arms or the wheel itself on or off. But then there's games like Gran Turismo 7 which don't allow those particular adjustments and that might be a deal breaker depending on your preferences. Rather interestingly, a handful of you hoodlums made the argument that the bonnet view is more realistic because you don't really see the cockpit when driving. I'm going to respectfully but very strongly disagree with that. I have never had a driving experience where I wasn't very consciously aware of the car's interior. Firstly, even if your vision is totally focused on the road ahead, the cockpit is still going to be totally dominating your peripheral vision and as it should, it's your immediate surroundings and it's the closest thing that you can see. And secondly, to point out the elephant in the room, you are routinely taking your eyes off of the road to look at the interior of the car, whether you're glancing at the dash or you're checking your rear or side view mirrors or the GPS. I'm not saying you're lying, but if this was LA Noir, my X button would be caved in by now. But regardless, between the cockpit, bonnet and bumper cam fans, it seems that quite a lot of you agree that driving from first person is the way to go. Based on this recent poll of my audience, it's nearly 90% of you. But like anything, it wasn't universal, and quite a few of you pledged your loyalty and undying love to your chase cam waifu. Aside from people subjectively preferring the visual experience, the main argument that was made for it being better was that it allows for more spatial awareness of the car's immediate surroundings. In the case of rallying, you can see how close the car, especially the rear, is to the limits of the road itself and the proximity of roadside obstacles. As for circuit racing, you can have more awareness of the cars around you. Strictly speaking, I agree, you can see those things better from the chase cam. But at that point, I think what we're actually talking about here is a difference in attitude, rather than which camera is better. For simulators in particular, many people play with the intention of replicating the real thing as best they can. There's always going to be compromises, of course, due to both hardware and software limitations, but realism, within reason, is the goal. Any extra awareness that you're getting from the chase cam is not realistic, you wouldn't have that vision in a real car. So I think the decision to drive from the chase cam stems from that player having a different expectation of what they want from the game which doesn't preclude them from using an unrealistic camera angle to feel comfortable or to gain a perceived advantage. I don't think that's wrong, it's just a different perspective of the game that leads to a different perspective in the game. Ultimately, spatial awareness from the cockpit can be developed with experience, but in the case of wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, there's a couple of tools that you can use to help yourself be aware of the cars around you. The first is the spotter. iRacing has one built in that is on by default, and there's also a free third-party one called Crew Chief, which works with most of the major PC titles. It's a pretty immersive way of getting that extra information. Come on, your left side. On the more controversial and less realistic end of the spectrum, there's also radars. Some simulators have one built in, and for other games there are third-party overlays available. 
It's obvious why some players don't like these, but I think for single screen races like myself, I consider them to be an unrealistic method of delivering a more realistic level of awareness, though they arguably give you more awareness than you would actually have. The thing is, you can't do proper head checks on a single display unless you've got a head tracking system of some kind, such as Track IR. You can use a button to look left or right, but I think it's way too abrupt and disorienting, and far too awkward to use mid-corner, so I think these sorts of radars are a net positive because they help to enable cleaner racing. And ultimately, if you're willing to make a realism compromise to gain more awareness of the cars around you, I personally think that a radar is a much smaller compromise than using the chase cam. Speaking of perspective, even between players who drive from the cockpit, there's different schools of thought for how to set that up as well. One of the most common things that you'll see is wheel users who can't stand having a virtual wheel shown on screen, so they opt to have it hidden or to use the dashboard camera. I think that approach makes a lot of sense if you have a more ideal display setup, but since I don't, I have issues with it. Personally, I find that the dashboard view loses a bit too much peripheral vision for my liking. Not only because the camera is further forward, but in the types of cars that I tend to drive, the viewpoint is quite close to the A-pillar. Much like in real life, the A-pillar is already a natural blind spot, and the dash view makes it look really big, so it often cuts off a significant portion of the side of the screen. This is very car dependent though. If you're driving an open wheeler where visibility tends to be excellent, it's not really an issue. But again, if I had a triple screen set up and it was mounted right above or behind my wheelbase, I think the dashboard cam would work nicely. As for the virtual wheel, because I tend to have the camera positioned further back, if I turn the wheel off, I end up with a bare steering column sticking out of the dash, which looks really weird to me. Because my physical wheel isn't close enough to my screen to cover it up, I choose to leave the virtual wheel on, though I tend to leave the arms hidden as I often find the way they're animated to be distracting or unnatural. Additionally, some cars have important digital dash information displayed on the virtual wheel, which I prefer to see. But ultimately, as a content creator, I think it looks better for my cockpit footage to show the wheel so that my viewers get an indication of my inputs. For the purposes of watching a video, I think that this looks much nicer than this. Another element of your camera choice, but especially the cockpit camera, that tends to be the subject of much discussion is the field of view, or FOV. This is a technical topic, so if you want to deep dive on the subject, there's a bunch of videos around that will explain it better than I can. But the short and skinny of it is that having your FOV turned up higher allows you to see more, but what you'll be seeing is distorted, which makes judging space and distance, on all three axes, more difficult. This is highly relevant for judging your breakpoints, or estimating how much speed you can hold through a corner, or even how much space there is between other cars. So, ideally, you want to turn your FOV down to a mathematically correct value, which is determined by your display's size, aspect ratio, and how far you're sitting from it. There are a number of calculators around that can give you this correct number quite easily. But, again, when you don't have an optimal sim racing display setup, I don't think that going the mathematically correct route is the move. For example, I use an FOV of 40 degrees in Assetto Corsa. This is just tuned by eye so that I can see a reasonable amount whilst avoiding severe fisheye distortion as much as possible. The mathematically correct FOV value for my setup would be about 26 degrees, which looks like this. In my honest opinion, this is almost undrivable. It, it feels like I'm wearing binoculars. I have no peripheral vision and the sense of speed is about as real as trickle down economics. I found that this FOV didn't make me any better or more consistent, and totally sucked the fun out of the driving. Unless you've got triples or a super ultra wide or a very big screen that you're sitting close to, I don't think a mathematically correct FOV is worth it. Just turn it down as much as you can get away with for your setup, while still being able to see what's going on. Certain games do feature a look to apex option, which some people find helpful as a way of more easily seeing into the corner from the cockpit particularly on a single screen. I personally don't use this for racing, but I find it to be very helpful for drifting, as you tend to get the car at very extreme angles, so facing forwards isn't always for the best. It's certainly worth trying at the very least. To summarize this discussion, I think it's fair to say that when looking at all the camera choices with a critical eye, none of them are going to give you a perfect one-to-one -one experience of driving a real car. 
In one way or another, they're all wrong. But I personally think that the cockpit camera, warts and all, is the least wrong, and that's why I use it. It also has the most headroom to grow into it, usually by throwing money at the problem, to achieve a more realistic end result than the other cameras. There's compromise in everything, so just choose the compromise that makes you the happiest. As an honourable mention, I wanted to give a quick shout out to these absolute giga chads. Non-cockpit drivers who heard me out and decided to give the cockpit a try. Informing newcomers and people who hadn't tried the cockpit was my entire motivation for making that video, so you folks are the real MVPs for being open-minded enough to give it a chance, regardless of what the outcome is. You guys are awesome. And a quick dishonourable mention for this guy. Fucking embarrassing, mate. Well, thank you very much for watching. Since I've now definitively proven the cockpit camera to be the one true choice for racing games, be sure to let people know in the comment section that there's no point in commenting. Like and subscribe if you want to see more videos about sim racing. Until next time, let the holy wars begin.